for our first case study for Instagram. The whole goal of this Instagram case study is to teach people how to convert more, grow more, and sell more with your brand no matter what the niche is, no matter how big it is, no matter what your angle is. So that is the fun of this. I gave up playing video games to do this for real life because the same thing as a video game. So here we have uh, our very first um, guest, which is Shannon Cassano. And you're based mm -hmm. where, Shannon? Texas. Texas. Okay, my grandma grew up there. She. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, what's your accent from? Sometimes a little <laughs> bit Texan, a little bit some Texas. Okay. Sure. Well, I've only lived here for the last year. Before that, I lived in Alaska for 20 years. So. Oh, yeah. okay. Wow, that's a yeah. big, change. big change. Big change. Do you see that there's a change from... Alaska to Texas in the type of business that you're running? Um, well, I worked for a financial institution in Alaska. Um, here, I'm out of the corporate life and starting something new. So, yes, okay. for me, it's very different. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm excited to know what – I know you sent this to me earlier, but what is your brand? And we're going to look it up on my phone right here. Um what was your brand name for your Instagram? So it's Espresso Essentials dot five point or dot five zero. Um, so my son and I had come up with an idea to sell sixteen ounce disposable coffee cups on Amazon. We got the product, got it shipped to Amazon, and it's just about ready to sell. Um, and we have it so that um, I've made one purchase from it just to kind of see how it functions. And um, the account's about ready to go live. He's actually working on that right now. So now that the product is there at Amazon, we want to build an Instagram page to promote the product and get it sold. Oh, okay. So a um, couple questions. First, how old is your son? 29. Wow. Okay. So he's definitely entrepreneur minded yes. and really fun. okay um and you're doing amazon fba i'm assuming yeah right is this your first product very first okay so first of first i like what you're doing because here's one thing that's cool to know right what i see here is one cup with the sleeve and the lid and number one you're mm -hmm. selling something that everybody uses all the time Right. The second thing is that Starbucks did not make the money from the coffee. In fact, they made the money from the brand name. And they buy the, the blank cup like what you have and it's the branding. So essentially, right. my, my guess is there's two angles you could take this. Either you're going to treat yourself like a wholesaler or you're going to create mm -hmm. a, a custom brand around yeah. it or do both maybe. So – the biggest key factor to this is your community. If you're just selling me something that I can label myself, then essentially you're just wholesaling. And it's all about price differences. Why is yours right. more convenient versus somebody else selling? There's probably 100 people selling, or 1,000, I don't know, selling exactly probably. the same thing that you're doing, right? Right, so ours comes in a pack in a plastic bag with our brand on the front, with our, our label on the front of the bag. Um, and then people can put their own sticker or stamp on the cup or the sleeve as needed if they're using them, say, in their own coffee shop. Um, or if it's, you know, just maybe a church group or a youth group um, buying to-go cups for an event, you know, then it doesn't matter. But they're in a plastic bag that can sit on your shelf until you're ready to use. They stay sterile. Got it. Okay. So I see the use case of it. But... If anybody can get access to these, and I'm assuming that the probably the manufacturer, maybe this is my assumption. You can correct me, but mm -hmm. does your manufacturer come from China or? Yes. Okay, so it'd be something kind of like Alibaba or AliExpress, something like that. Something like that, yeah. Okay, so if you can get mass-produced products that everybody else can get mass-produced products, what makes yours better than theirs? Ours is convenient in that it. You know, it can be delivered by Amazon within a couple of days, and it comes in a sealed pack so that you can order a few, stick them on the shelf, and use them as needed, 
or you can order several, uh, you know, 50 packs. If you're in a coffee shop situation where you want to, um, you know, just pull down your next 50 pack as needed, you can do that, but they're up on the shelf, not collecting dust, staying clean until you're ready to open that next pack. Okay, so I've gotten two things from you so far. Like, my mind's always constantly moving, so I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's find what you're doing. Let's see what you're missing. Let's see all your ideas and how to combine them. Okay, so the first thing is you said something about stickers. Have you thought about selling stickers too? We have, but we're not there yet. We want to get through this first round of cups right, and see okay. how it goes and see what the use is, what kind of reviews do we get. Um, because if it tends to lean more that direction, we may want to be able to sell some kind of sticker or um, maybe personalized sticker or maybe blank stickers for people to fill in or put their own stamp on. Um, we just want to see what kind of feedback we get in this first round. Okay. Uh, so when you're doing feedback, do you have any specific elements that you've um, written down that you're like, okay, let's try this and see how it works and then gauge yourself? Kind of like, let's tab over yeah. here real quick. Here's my Excel sheet, right? So as I'm hearing what you're saying, have you made any sales yet? No. Okay. So I'll put zero there because we're going to follow up later and then we're going to see if anything that I told you today actually helped. Right? Okay. Growth. You're starting at zero, right? Right. Right. Okay. Your objective is to sell first round? Yep. Round of cups. Okay. And then... With your first round of cups, how many do you have of units? Um, oh, well, my son would know that because he ordered <laughs> okay. it. I don't, I don't, I don't know those numbers. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll check in with you later on that. Um, okay. So we, we'd want to find out how many units you have. We want to find out how much are your – I mean, I guess I could do this later. But we'd want to find out um, how many units you have. What are your competitors selling? How many units do they have? The first thing that you really want to focus on with Amazon is getting as many possible uh, testimonials as, as fast as you can. Sometimes that means giving away cheap, free, okay. discounted, your friends. Just get them out there so that you can start ranking higher on Amazon. Gotcha. Okay. So that would be the Amazon thing. Um, not sure how that would affect Instagram whatsoever, but... You want to find out how much are they selling for. If they're selling the exact same thing as you and they're selling it for 15 cents cheaper, why? you got to question yourself right. because they're going to undercut you and they're always going to be selling because they're going to keep getting more testimonials and ranking up. No one will mm -hmm. scroll down until they see your product because you have right. 10 reviews or something like that. So sure. uh, that would be one of the first things that you want to focus on. Uh, second is you definitely got to know your margins. And then third, if you're selling something blank, that has no branding to it you probably want to focus on building a brand and what makes your brand different technically it doesn't have to right. be better because you're selling the same cup that everybody else is selling so it's more about community and branding so i think mm -hmm. that's the angle that we'll take today um so i got okay. if i think of any more things about you know your initial business model i'll, I'll mention them but uh as far okay. as Instagram goes, let's take a look what we have over here on the right. Um, can you see that? No, you can't see it. Okay. Um, it's really tiny, but okay. I mean, I can kind of see it. Okay. So, all right. The first thing I'm going to mention is never worry about how you started. You got to start somewhere. But yeah. the username is not memorable. It's mm. too long and there's too many breaks in it. So if you okay. could think of something smooth, clean, like five, six characters or less, let's oh. go, let's pull open an example. Okay, let's uh, let's look at okay, Starbucks. <laughs> I mean, why not? Yeah. Look how simple it is, and it was a word that didn't mean anything at all until there was right. meaning behind it, right? I'm right, gonna, right. I'm gonna take off my uh, okay. Okay. So when I look up Starbucks, the first thing that we're seeing is the Explore page, and we're seeing what's going viral, right? Mm -hmm. So the difference is if you have a closed cup, you don't get to see what's in it.
but the visual element is one little small piece that's going to add to your branding. And look at this okay. crazy cool cup over on the left. It's right. Like, it's they probably bought the cup for a little bit more, and also it has the Starbucks logo on it. But once you get into like Alibaba, you can find the manufacturers and say, "I want custom like this," or you just find like a non-logo version and brand it yourself. Okay. I mean, okay. That's a whole another rabbit hole. So obviously, you want to start yeah. with step one. I'm just giving ideas for the future because you want to know where you want to end up. If you're just trying it out, you're never going to get results because you don't know what to expect and you're not going to uh, sure. A-B test enough, I guess. So okay. when we're looking at this this one up here, it's the exact same cup as down here. Look at the difference. Right. This one might be like eco-friendly or something, the way that it looks. It might be like recycled, biodegradable, something that if someone throws it out on the – like sure. litters or something might not affect the planet. So people are really, really into that. And I don't know if that's a selling point. Like these are things, because this is not my niche, but I feel like I can market any niche. But for you to get the results that you expect, mm -hmm. you will have to dive into what other people are doing and find out what people are saying and why they like it. So the first thing you probably want to do is go to anybody else's Amazon who's selling the exact same thing as you no label okay. cups find out what the reviews are saying and why they like it gotcha and now you're gonna get feedback about uh, we like this because and mm -hmm. either it was good shipping or it was like cheap or it was like I got 500 here because someone else was selling them for ten dollars more or I don't sure. know, whatever reason write all those reasons down on your Excel sheet and then you okay. can measure out different angles to take okay okay um never try to reinvent the wheel because if someone else is already doing it well you could do it right later. well that makes sense so here on the explore page let's go ahead and click this i don't think this is starbucks himself oh I keep on forgetting can't click <laughs> it's on my phone uh okay let's look at the video this is how this is kind of how you grow, mm -hmm. right? You're showing visuals and they're quick. They're almost like highlights. The big issue with people making content is they make the whole thing and they don't make the cuts. So it goes too much work okay. to make a long video, but that long video might do better than 20 of your your original videos that you did not cut into a highlight reel. Like that actually. So maybe is, show a person at home making their own espresso in my cups. Exactly, and it. Okay. And another thing is um, we might run across it at some point. Like this is a clear cup, obviously. So mm -hmm. they have an advantage because you can see it from a video angle, what's going in, all the mixture, how much going in. It had, right. Even on the side, um, I don't know, you probably can't see my mouse, but over on the side you see like lines. Those are measuring. That's like okay. subconscious measuring about how much coffee am I putting in, how much mixture am I putting in, how much cream. Right. So that helps people measure because if you just dump a whole bunch of coffee in there and you don't know how much coffee you're putting in, you might get too much caffeine or too little of caffeine that you're used to. Right. So we're just thinking about the small, small, small things like benefiting people. Like they'll buy the coffee, but if you have an upsell and an upsell, we'll talk about that later. But always be thinking about – how are you providing value and how are you stimulating someone's adrenaline rush or urge to want to buy from you versus someone else rather than because right now if you're just selling right. a blank cup on Amazon, there's no story to it. It's just the only advantage you have yeah. is either you're selling cheaper than someone else or they ran out of products and yours is next up. So they're going to buy yours because there's zero because right. you just launched. So we expect that to happen. So it's good. Yeah. It's good that you're you haven't tried a whole bunch of things out and spent a bunch of time and money yet because now we can understand how to dissect your. Uh, I never call them competitors. I call them inspiration. You know, sure, <laughs> I like that. That's pretty good. I mean, the thought with the Instagram page is that we would have a link to our Amazon um, page, you know, that sells the cups, and we would do things like a video showing somebody making espresso. 
a cup of coffee, you know, show the somebody maybe drinking from the coffee cup with the lid on, not spilling, that kind of thing. Um, and that would then inspire people hopefully to click the link and they'd be brought to our Amazon page where they could, you know, buy the cups. I think that's an amazing starting point. And the fact that you thought about all of the ways that you can start content is great. That's your groundwork. Um, to yes and to what you just said, uh, this is what I advise and I've advised dozens, maybe hundreds of people to do this. You don't want to try to create all your content one by one by one and have to think of it on the spot. Make a bullet point list and make like a major category. Here's all the ways that our cup is more convenient. You could be like, let's make a video where we're in a car and you hit a bump. Okay, the lid didn't come off, but then you could show an alternate version where the lid did come off and spills all over everybody. And people <laughs> love that. They're like, oh man. And then that goes right. viral. So create okay. controversy and create, show yours as convenient versus the controversial something. So. Your son could probably sure. think of crazy things about like talk about stories about all the worst things that ever happened by not having a convenient coffee cup or sure. label or something and then right, right. recreate them. You don't have to use hot coffee and then when you spill it on yourself, but make it look like like it's hot and like, ah, oh, reaction. No one's going to know. But even right. even if they're like, oh, it was cold coffee. Well, they just got another click, which in increased more engagement, which increased you potentially reaching the explore feed and lasting longer. So, okay. so that's really cool. Um, so what I would suggest is you make your first topics and then mm -hmm. break it down in bullet points and make various topics. Like one is just about all the what ifs, um, the crazy things that happens by not having a secure coffee lid. Cause that actually happened to me when I went to Seven Eleven to get coffee and then the mm -hmm. lid didn't fit and on the way home, it spilled all over me and I had to clean up the car and it cost me an hour. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. But right after that I got it detailed, I'm like, damn. Right. Yeah, that's happened to me too. Where I went to pick up my coffee cup and the lid was came loose and it was full and it kind of spilled all inside the cup holder in my car. and It was a mess. And, and so yeah. it's not, not just talking about those, but showing them. And that's what people's going to like um, – Maybe you can find friends or somebody who's got a car who doesn't, who's already kind of dirty and they're going to get it cleaned anyways sure. and then yeah. make the video in there. But think of all of those and try to film them all in a day and then okay. go, go think of how many different, um, you know, foam arts can I make and all the different ones that you know you're good at and then go make a whole bunch of foam arts on top of your coffee. Those go viral. And then okay. think about, um, I don't know. Go, go do research and find all the different things that are going viral and then, hey, that gave me an idea. And then try to make mm -hmm. as many of those as you can in a day. All of a sudden, you have three days of content which will last you a month, two months, or three months. And you don't have to think about it. You can pre-schedule it. And uh, that's the biggest time consumer for most people. They can't stay consistent. And if you're not consistent, you're not going to grow very well. It's just okay. how it is. Good to know. And then... Um as far as promoting your Instagram page, um, I mean, do you buy ads or is that just sort of a natural evolution as you add more content, you just naturally gain more followers and then more people see it? Um, there's two routes to take. Like you technically don't need to have any content. Like you just have your account now and start running ads if you wanted. Um, mm. obviously the more backstory there is, the more it might get people to engage. But the fact is you're not trying to sell from Instagram. You're trying to sell from Amazon. Right. So the first thing you need to do, let, let's take a look at this. Um, well, I'm not logged into the page, but you want to turn this into a business account as soon as possible. Okay. The reasons you want to have a business account is a, you can post that clickable link on your bio B. Okay. It will give you an analytics from the back and you can see what content people are resonating with the most. Mm -hmm. And C, um, if it's just a blank account, like people will not resonate it if you're trying to treat yourself as a brand. And mm. 
there's no essentials there and it's kind of just bare and basic, people right. won't respect it as much. If that okay. makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so let's uh, let's dissect this account right now. Um, okay, so everything is constru constructive criticism. Like, Absolutely. You, you have a starting point. Um, and, yeah. and the good thing is you just started this. You have not put a lot of work into it. so No work. You, I just <laughs> barely came up with a name. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. Um, one, two things to consider is with your name, are you planning on LLCing down the line or you just kind of uh, DBAing it? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. I I not haven't decided yet if that's what we were going to do, but but probably eventually. Okay. So yeah, the the first thing in business is never go spend a bunch of money on the business part until you know that you're making money with it. Yeah. It's not like anybody's going to come sue you or anything like that. Like. Uh, right. And if you're ever worried about that, you should have a disclaimer on your Am Amazon account saying. Uh, we do not manufacture these, we sell them. Mm -hmm. And if there's ever a problem with the coffee or something like that, and you get burned, don't come to us and try to sue us, kind of thing, you know? <laughs> so, okay, so I could probably find somebody else's disclaimer and just sort of copy. Yeah, be inspired. <laughs> be inspired similar, by similar, similar wording. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And another thing is look at other people's frequently asked questions and try to have your own frequently asked questions. Like, okay, go ask average people like that you know in Texas. Like, give them a coffee yeah. cup and ask for a review. Be like, hey, I'm gonna give you a coffee cup, or I'm gonna send you a sample size. Like, I'll send you three of them straight to your door for free. You can give them a coupon mm -hmm. code or whatever, and then all I'm asking is for a review, and it's coming from different IPs so that they can't track that you're like farming reviews which some people have done they caught on to that and sure. uh, those accounts got banned for life so you don't ever want to oh. get stuck there. okay so right. let's check this out all right so the first thing that we can do is let's check this out Asse espresso essentials we kind of already discussed your name um right. i know you're starting with instagram but you'd want to go research all of the socials and try to have something that nobody's used on all of them so it's easy to remember and your brand has matching identity. Okay. So this is, I'm going to tell you straight up, you probably don't want to have any underscores, periods, or numbers in it if you can help it. Unless the number okay. is part of your brand name itself. No, it's not. So, And, the, and I only picked the dot five zero because we're selling them in packs of 50. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> that was where that 50 came from. But um, I can maybe change it up a little bit, make it shorter. I'll figure it out. Okay. First thing is, like, try to find a username that is uh, um, congruent across the board and mm -hmm. easy to remember. Um, technically, you for your username, you don't need to have that as your keyword, but you want to be very SEO conscious. Especially with your Amazon Amazon account, mm -hmm. uh, SEO keywords and search keywords are very, very, very important. Okay, so okay. Let, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you an example right here. Um, I'll just type in, type in something. Espresso oh, Essentials. Ah, I can't type fast. And then you'll break it up. Like with a, you see the bracket there, the vertical? It's almost like an L. Yeah. Okay, you can do that or comma. Like for here, it makes more sense to use this. And I see somebody else is using Espresso Essentials as well. Um, okay. Two other people. But this is the same thing you're going to do on Amazon. Amazon head headline words has all everything written in the description right off the bat. It's like Espresso Essentials, coffee cups, 16 ounce. 32 ounce, 64 ounce, for hot sure. and cold, um, made with eco-friendly, whatever. Right. Um, so those are keywords that you want to use, but you want to know what's your most powerful keyword. And you can change your name, your actual username. So let's okay. go back Let's go back to your actual username. Uh, where it says Espresso Essentials right there, right? Yeah. So I'm going to show you my own.
Yeah, you see where it says Kyle Ray Vertical? Yeah. Marketing, comma, crypto, and NFT connoisseur. Right? So you right. can put your description right after your name. Or you okay. can change your whole name to the keyword that you're trying to target. Okay. Um, this is a hack that maybe 10% of people use or okay. less on all of Instagram. And, and it's extra important for people who are running a business. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and then you see on the left, I use emojis, but let's let's look at my own account right here. This is for branding. Um, so you can see that the color tone <laughs> matches with the brand color tone over on the left, the yeah. three orange circles and the three black dots, but it also looks professional, it's easy to read. So your first line, you want to have something like your main selling point. Our cups are cheaper than everybody else, or our our affordable. Yeah, mm -hmm. are more affordable than everybody else, or whatever. Your second one is they work for every type of liquid, and the third mm -hmm. one is feel free to it's your call to action. Click the link to purchase, or you know something like that. Okay, and yeah, then, that makes. And, and then you'll have a business account. So the first thing you're going to do is switch to a business account. Right. The link will be there and it's always going to be there. Okay. Um, how to make sure that you know your traffic is coming from your Instagram is use Bitly. Have you ever heard of Bitly? No. Okay. So check this out. Bitly. URL shortener. All right. It's free. You okay. just essentially log in with your, let's say Google or something like that. I'm gonna mm -hmm. see if I have. Let's see if I have one in here. Already set up, so I can show you. So if you have different links and you're trying different things, like you're selling from Shopify or you're selling from Amazon or whatever, and you want to know where the traffic's coming from. So sure. let's look at this top ten Instagram trends. Let's add zero clicks. Maybe I never used it. Okay, this was for an old, a old client I had. So I had 119 clicks from there. So I can see, okay, the clicks are not any time recent. But you could add tags in there. You can make it custom ending. Like it's it's always going to start with bit.ly and then... Right, oh, I've seen that. Okay, yes. Right. So that's what you'd want to do in order to track your links so that you know that they're coming from Instagram. Okay. All right, here's another okay. thing that people don't tend to do. I'm just going to switch over to my other brand real quick. Let's go to let's go to this one. All right, so you see highlights. Okay. Highlights is a selling point. That's all of the different highlights of why, like you can make them however you want. It could be like all of our, our cup types, eco-friendly, like posting as one, posting as a dozen to sell um, right. all the different products you're selling. Another one could be highlights from your stories from what went viral or um, all the different foam types that people are doing. Another one could be like testimonials. Another one could be whatever. Be creative with it, you know? Okay. Um, those happen after you go into stories. Like this okay. is a story and I can turn it into a highlight later. Okay. Because stories only last 24 hours. Ah, uh, okay. That's right. So one thing that really pisses me off is scams. People use my name to scam all the time, and so I made it one yeah. that only shows people trying to scam other people, especially using my name, so people know what to look for. Okay. So essentially go to more, edit, highlight, and then I can go find in here. Okay, these were the old ones. Let's see what the mm -hmm. new, if there's any scams that I posted recently. I don't think so. But I could go in there and uh, just click on stories. And it's going to list all of your stories, recent and old. Okay. And uh, that's going to be a good selling point for you. Okay. And then to get covers, essentially to get covers, this is what I do. Either if you're good at Photoshop, you can do it for free. If not, just go to Fiverr. 
It's like I get a lot of my work done on Fiverr because my time is way more valuable than trying to spend an hour or two doing it myself. I'd rather just pay five or ten bucks or something. Go okay. to uh, Instagram stories covers. And then you'll be at like five bucks. Someone can create something that matches my brand. You can see there's many different stories covers here. Okay. And, and so you just pay a few dollars and you get something that goes along with whatever it is you're trying to promote. Yeah. So these people will make them custom unless they already custom have them created. Then they'll just send them over to you. I look okay. for lots of completed jobs with a five star or as close to five star as possible. Uh, that makes sense. Five bucks. Literally five bucks. Now you don't have to go find those and it would take you half a day just to go find where they sell these things. So I'd rather yeah. spend five bucks and be done with it and have them hand delivered to me and then put <laughs> them on a blank background than to try to, you know, figure it out myself. This one, they do the entire cover for you. So they might charge a little more. They do the whole cover than just the little icon. Okay. So if you find someone that has the icon, you could buy the icon. Um, oh, wow. And then send it over to somebody who's going to do the full cover if if you don't want to do it yourself or you can just make it yourself. So that's just another yeah. little hack that you can do. Okay. Okay, let's go back here and look at your brain. All right. So from that point, that's your essentials right there, right? Here's one thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody's engaged with this because you didn't use hashtags. No, well, I just wanted to get, get the page else. started, and yeah. I I didn't want to do any hashtags yet because I didn't want to draw any attention to it okay. until I'm ready to go, you know what I mean? With the hashtags, cause I didn't add any because I want to wait until I've got the link on and I've got maybe a few posts, and then I was going to add the hashtags so that, you know, it would be promoted. Um, but do you recommend using as many as you can think of within an industry or copying from similar types of pages that are out there? How do you recommend like coming up with what you're going to use for your hashtags? Okay. Very, very, very good question. Let's uh, dissect. I'm going to show you three cool ways to get hashtags right now. Okay. Let's, okay. uh, let's look up coffee, coffee. Okay, I'm gonna go here. Okay, this is what I was talking about. You get something like that. If they had a cup that looked like yours, it would be even better. But you see right. Winnie, Winnie the Pooh right there. All right. That's cute. Yeah. So what hashtags did they use? They didn't use a lot, but they're already a big account. It's more mm -hmm. essential to have more hashtags when you're a small account than a big one, because okay. you're trying to rank all over the place. Once you get so big. The, the whole key factor is that AI wants you to get as much engagement in the first hour as possible. And so they can find mm -hmm. that you're relevant because the whole point is they want to keep people on their platform so they can feed them more ads, which is how they make money. Okay. So they want people to stay as long and long and long as possible. So if your content's not keeping up people on there long, they're going to give priority to somebody else who is. Okay. Because they don't want people to come on and think, oh, this is stupid, and then leave and go to another social platform. Right. Okay. So something like <laughs> it's so funny that but it's so funny like I mean you got to be careful with this and maybe this works with like shout outs or working with other brands to mm -hmm. get their content and repost it on yours and make it a viral account like you can yes. make a whole separate account just dedicated to coffee stuff that doesn't have any of your products in it at all and mm -hmm. make it go viral and just have your link in there and send it to your Amazon. But you got to be careful with that. Um, yeah. But people do that all the time, like with their Shopify, okay. dropshipping stores, stuff like that. Um, sure. So let's look at their main hashtags, right? Latte, Winnie the Pooh, Coffee, Coffee Day, New Chick. They only used five. right? So that's all right. But let's see if there's anyone here. Not all the times do people post hashtags on mm -hmm. their initial post or... Sometimes they post it as the first comment, which also works because okay. they don't want it all to break in into their text, their caption. Right. So here's more. So I would go here and be like, okay, they got 532. Oh, wow. They have 20,000 oh, wow. followers. Latte okay. artist. So they're an artist okay. of lattes. They make art on, on it. So that's like, oh, wow, really cool. These are the, yeah. these are the type of people I would engage with. Okay. But if right now, until you have a brand identity, you need to figure out your color tone, your message, 
um, how to keep people in your community because if you're just straight selling products, mm -hmm. you need to just run paid ads and not worry about community because it doesn't, nobody really cares about that because you're not selling a community, you're selling a, a solution to something anybody else can get. So until you have an identity there, paid mm -hmm. ads is your best bet. But um, okay. in the meantime, when you are posting, you can start building your identity because the main thing with any brand is you probably want to have more than one offer and more than one product. So okay. for me, for Instagram, for instance, I would sell a one hour consultation. Those are for people that are, have not quite bought into the big idea yet that I can teach you anything about Instagram. And then sure. maybe we've already done our consult and they're like, hey, I just want to try one other thing out. Okay, so we do a one hour. And then they're like, right. actually, I want to try something out, but I need some follow-ups. So we give them a package. Okay, there's your upsell. And then gotcha. there's people who I don't want to do a lot of one-on-ones with because you're too new and you're going to be asking all the same basic questions and you don't have a lot of money, so I have a course. Okay. And, and so there's people who have a brand who are doing making some money and have some money to invest, and that's the eight-week program. Okay. And then there's brands who have a big budget and they want to capitalize on absolutely oh, everything. Lost, yeah. Uh, and so the final one is like you want to have a big ticket offer. So a brand who has a big budget, uh, you would want to sell them on something that matches what they need. Mm -hmm. So essentially what I see what you're selling is you could sell to restaurants cheaper than somebody else, get it to them mm -hmm. faster, or supply mm -hmm. your supply doesn't run out. Um, right. So you don't have a lot of strengths in the overall market scheme of things. So that's where a brand identity would come in. Like St Starbucks coffee sells the same coffee Kirkland from Costco sells, I believe. Yeah. It's the same thing, but it's just a different brand. Right. So uh, it's really about presentation. So here over uh, on this post, you see a, a variety of different hot, uh, hashtags. Right, so you can go start pulling those hashtags from other accounts that are getting very good engagement. So if they have okay. 532 likes, but zero comments. Oh, there's the comments. Okay, so they have comments, okay. and you also see they reply to every comment, which is very very huge, right? Right. So every person that comments. The thing is, if you're just selling a basic product with no backstory. At first, people that comment might not really be interested. They're just supporting or something. So who, you got to find out who's your target market. And if it's just brands or businesses, then you got to just straight up outreach to them and be like, yo, I have all these. I want to sell them to you. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Or it's just a general audience because Amazon's a little different than Instagram. Um, okay. But once you start building that momentum, you're like, oh, I, I thought of things that are going to increase the brand identity. And that, maybe that's your homework for this week is mm -hmm. uh, to figure out what that is. Then when people reach out to you or reach out on other pages like this and you have something that they might want to buy, then you can follow them and they might follow you back. So now you okay. just reach a direct target market and that's how you're going to start growing by okay. direct response. And then if they engage with you, then you could go like this message them okay and voice message them with the voice icon in the bottom right down oh wow okay right here and if, if they you, hear your voice they know you're real you're not a scammer or a spammer you're not just some ai bot yeah you know links to buy something and maybe you could go look up here's one thing you could do go look up location Okay, a lot of people don't post locations on their posts. Oh. But people will find you more because this one doesn't have a lo location. I'm just going to scroll. Okay, there we go. Bra Brownettes Coffee. Braun, what is it? Braun Notes Coffee right below it. So you click on it and it brings you to the location. They already okay. have their information logged in. They're an actual like coffee shop or something, I guess. Like it, yeah, which we are going to be opening a coffee shop at some point. We've bought the commercial land, had some issues with city water not being able to be brought in, so uh, we're going to have to put on hold. But at some point, probably early next year, we'll have a coffee shop open also. So 
that's a huge thing for you. Then you can upgrade and that will just be a, like a, a cherry on top business that you have now. But look at the imagery here. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You, you could have a top bottom view with all the different arts on all of these different cups. Yeah. And don't even have to see the cup and you just see the art and that sells too. Right. So, and also they're using locations. So locations can be geo targeted. So I could say like Texas, right? Let's look up, uh, let's explore the map. Okay, let's go. I don't know where they are. Oh, that's North Hollywood. Oh, that's right next to me. Cool. Okay, let's go down to. So we're, we're like living right by Lake Livingston. Okay, let's see. Can we do a search? Livingston, Texas. Bam. Okay, so here we are, Livingston, Texas. Let's okay. see coffee shops, or let's just see what's what is what over here, and is there any coffee shops here? And if there are, Sam's Table Restaurant. Maybe they want yours for takeaway, right? So go there, and now you can see. All these people are engaging and tagging at this restaurant. Okay. They have that, but maybe they have coffee takeaway. I don't know. Maybe they need your cups, right? Because your cups are not branded. And right. maybe you could offer them a branding service if they haven't thought of it. Maybe they have thought of it. So that could be your upsell. Hey, do you want us to like print your logo on our cups and then custom hand make them for you or whatever? How many do you need? Uh -huh. And right. then try to get them on a subscription service. Hey, I'll give you 50 cups. I mean, most restaurants won't do that because they don't know how many they use. But a coffee shop might want to be on a subscription service. Will you give them a 10% discount if they just constantly buy from you on the first of every month or something? Like that. Okay, so when you go here, now you can reach out to these businesses and customers and know like, okay, I know exactly who's using Instagram. And because they're socially present, I want to tag myself onto that. How can I do that? Okay. Oh, here's a Buzzcat Cafe. Okay. Ask them where they get their coffee cups. See if you can beat their price. Okay. And a lot of people use plastic because you can see the color. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's so hot that they sell a lot of cold. They melt, too. The one selling point you could have is, like, plastic in the heat will melt your liquid in there, and you're going to get... That's how some people can get cancer. So you yeah. don't want to have uh, coffee cups like that. And mm -hmm. also uh, styrofoam type coffee cups um, are biodegradable. And um, they can hold hot, keep your hot drink hot and your cold drink cold type of thing. Sure. So you got wax lined or whatever so they don't leak. But, um, you know, they still do pretty well, I would say, with... Um, hot and cold drinks, especially with the sleeve on it. Just seems like better than just your regular plastic cup that gets, um, you know, they get sweaty with the condensation on the outside and your ice melts fairly quickly. Um, the paper cup with the sleeve seems to last a little bit long. Bam, so you get your selling points. All these things, write down and have notes on them because that's when we're going to follow up and make sure that you've implemented all this stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of work. But I'm going to have this uh, video uploaded so you can always uh, click on it and watch again in case you missed anything. Um, back to hashtags, how to find a hashtag sets. That was the first one was to just look under viral accounts and see what's going viral. It's just okay. like, it's so easy to go on there and just target everything. Hey, they're doing what I want to do, but they're doing it better. Okay, so what are they doing so good? Visually amazing. It's a quick video. I can, this is a reel. Reels are going viral a lot. Maybe you can make more reels about your product. Um, put hashtags in there. And then use all the features in the platform. Here's the second thing is just look up hashtags and follow the hashtags. Coffee. No, let's go down. Coffee. Uh, and then go over to tags. So you can look up here and see what's the top coffee tags. You can go to accounts that have coffee in them. You can go to audio and people using coffee audios because 
those will help you go viral. Okay. Um, you can go look up at all the tags and you can look up the places. So with the tags, okay. you see here, coffee has 159 million posts. Good luck ever going viral. You might want to use it because okay. there's a lot of traction fast, but you're going to get buried by bigger accounts or more viral stuff. So you might, okay. you can use up to 30 hashtags in a regular post. I would say use at least 20 to 25, but don't use the same one every time because it looks spammy to the AI and they'll shadow ban you. And shadow ban means you will not get reached because you misuse the platform in a way that they don't want you to. So they're gonna assume okay. that you're a spam. So you wanna have different sets, right? Okay. So you wanna have like three to five big accounts, like massive ones, like coffee, 159 million. Coffee okay. time, 38.4 million. Coffee lover, 26.1 million. Coffee shop, 18.9 million. Coffee bar, 1.4 million. Huge, okay. huge. Okay, so then we're gonna scroll down and be like, okay, what's smaller? Okay, coffee addicts, 535,000 posts, way less but still medium and big. Right. Um, and then coffee addict spelled incorrectly, 369 million. Coffee please, uh, that's one million close. Um, this will only give you up to like, I don't know, so many, so you, you can try things out until you find something that's so rare, like coffee rarity. Oh, that's different. Yeah, try to think of things that people Okay, there's only 19 posts there, so that's too rare. <laughs> coffee, coffee in the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, look up coffee in the morning, click on tags. Coffee in the morning only has 88.8 thousand posts. Okay. So it's far less. So you want to find hashtag sets that are like 10,000 to, to 20,000 and make a majority of those while you're starting your account out till you get to like a thousand to five thousand followers. Okay. Okay, uh, coffee in the morning with a coffee emoji only has 1.5 thousand posts. The thing is people might start using it over time and look it up and mm -hmm. you might rank higher than other people on there longer. So people okay. will find you long term, short term and medium term. So that's why you wanna split up your hashtag sets. Okay. And then differently and that way you can, you know, attract different people perhaps. Exactly. And so there's apps that will help you um, find hashtag sets. Let's pull open one real quick. Find hashtag sets on Instagram. Instagram keyword tool.io generates hashtags. So like coffee. Okay. United States. Okay. Here's a whole bunch of hashtags. Okay, obviously it wants you to pay, but you can see it. It'll show the amount of posts, the amount of search volume, the trend of it, the average cost per click. So if you were going to do paid ads with the same hashtag, you would know on average how much it would cost before someone clicked it. And okay. uh, the competition. So this is a huge tool. So I haven't used it, but it looks really cool. Um, I might use it in the future. But uh, you can also do different Amazon as well. You can see up there. So okay. keywordtool.io. Um, write that one down because that could benefit you in multiple cases, and especially if you're using a YouTube because if you're making videos for Instagram, you can post it on YouTube, TikTok, share it to your Facebook business account. And just so you know, you should make a Facebook business account too because you can hyperlink your Instagram to it and automatically share. Especially okay. your stories and your your engagement rate will go up. Okay. So uh, that would be the third way to find hashtag sets. So yeah. those are the three ways. Uh, so I think from now, um, did you get a lot of value from this so far? I did, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely going to talk to my son about the the name that we're going to use for branding, at least on the IG page, and um, definitely look at getting some more reels. Um, he's working on getting the link for our account for the products that are going to be sold on Amazon. So once we have that, I'll use that bit.ly um, 
page to shrink the link so we can put it on Instagram and track it. I like that idea a lot because um, it'll help us with knowing, you know, how it's going to work. We had an Airbnb when we lived in Alaska and um, he would buy ads to promote. And we always did get reservations when he would buy ads and that was great, but we weren't able to really clearly track um, you know, exactly where our reservations coming from people just logging into Airbnb and seeing our ad there, or were they seeing our Instagram ad? So that'll be a very helpful tool uh, to have. So analytics of, is the key. Yeah. So lots of um, actionable things that we can do to get things moving forward and, and hopefully learn what it takes to get the product sold. And then next Next go round, we're going to do the idea is to do multiple products, not just have the one size cup, but have maybe hot cups, cold cups, more sizes, maybe have a green option that's biodegradable versus just the regular cups. Um, so you can also this do is just sort of the test The this is the test baby. So we'll see, you know, see where it goes. Uh, you can also do once you have more products, uh, pair them. Hey, you bought this, but you also want this as well. Uh, yeah. Kind of things. Um, right. So, okay. Actual, uh, to close this out, actionable steps is number one, uh, try to find a better brand uh, username that is universal. Yeah. And then there's tools for that too. Just search Google and say, search up my brand. Uh, I have something that's just buried within like a gazillion different website links but it shows okay. it it shows all of the major socials and how many people have claimed that username versus who hasn't okay um the second thing is we never went over this maybe we should do this really quick is try to find a much more um engaging image or maybe make a logo go to fiverr and look for a logo designer see got that written down too yeah um the third one is using your username uh, and making it a keyword, like we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing is adding your three topics, your selling points. Got it. The fifth is um, turning it to a business account so you can have a link and get analytics. Right. And you want to go see what other people are doing on the Explore page and just Kind of explore what other brands are doing similar to you and uh, get ideas. God. Look at other pages. Content types and then make your list for content types and what types of content you can film and try to get it all done in a day or two. Yeah, and I'm thinking that my son and um, his girlfriend may be able to film some of those things. A little short. I mean, do you recommend like Five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, does it matter um, for the little short clips that we're going to do? Uh, the best things to do is, number one, carousels. We didn't have time to go over that today. Maybe we can do that in the future. Carousel is image after image after image that all sync together. Maybe you're okay. showing how-to tips or, or something. How-to, like the headline is like, our coffee cups are the best. Or don't do this with your coffee. And then step one, step two, step three, or, you know, whatever. Um, right. Or five different things that are disastrous if you don't get a good coffee cup. And they're, they're videos or images or something like that. That's carousels. Mm -hmm. And a stagnant image is okay, but carousels do better because it keeps people's audience on there longer. And if you add value, people will stay longer and respect you more. And then okay. reels, when it comes to reels, um, mm -hmm. You want to try to get a loop in where people don't know where the beginning or end is, or it can, they're, they're hard to film, but I mean, if you can get at least one of those in there, it's going to help. And then you can piggyback off of that with your okay. other content. Um, usually the short is better because everybody has a small attention span, but make it a highlight. Don't, okay. if it's too long and you're filming and you're like, okay, you're ready. And then it's two seconds before you get to the point And then it just drags out and out and out. You won't yeah. care. Even if you're making art on, on top of your coffee, if it takes you a whole minute to do it, chop it up into like 15 seconds. So it's bam, 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 bam. And people are right. like, 
And then it also loops more because it's shorter. Okay. But it, but right. if you're adding value where it has to be long, just don't cut it at all. Like, okay. Um, and then uh, you know how to do hashtag sets now, so you've mm -hmm. got to make your hashtags ahead of time. And then um, one thing I noticed with with this was you said 50 16 ounce coffee cups with lids and sleeves. I see one. Yeah. But it, there's no context for it. You could write a whole paragraph. You could break it down and be like, okay. Ask a question because asking a question might get somebody to respond and that increases your engagement rate. The second thing okay. is you could write all the descriptions here and then you could say link in bio and then you could post the link and then you could literally write down sentence by sentence by sentence what it is, the exact same um, information you're providing on the Amazon and they could click it and go there. But if you're posting just products to sell over and over and over, nobody cares. So right. you only want to post a product every now and then and constantly just post things that will go viral or get people to engage. That maybe has absolutely nothing to do with what you're selling. But right. when it's time to sell it, yep. they'll buy it. I lost you. Oh, yeah. You froze. Uh, so the whole point is uh, make as much content that's not quite related to your product but just gets people to engage and then slip in that you sell these in there if you're trying to do the growth thing if you're just going okay. for direct sales do not use boost post because you cannot target exactly who you're using if you're doing okay. ads or sales that's a whole different rabbit hole but it, you're going to use made a business center through facebook itself oh, oh okay and then you're going to want to run various ad sets like 10 20 30 different ad sets with different different images, different text, different calls to action, different reasons, and then find out which one hits the most. Different hashtags, different locations, different whatever. Um, okay. But you need to measure with your Excel sheet and make sure that, you, that you're actually still making money from it. And you might not make any money. You might only make 10 cents per order to begin with, but that's at sure. least better than losing money. So you might be losing money on a lot. Um, right. So you just want to test a whole bunch of things out with that. But that's another rabbit hole. Um, okay. And then you know how to uh, reach out to uh, people or draw attention from other coffee people. Once you get good content on your on your account and you're consistent, it's going to make it way easier to grow and reach out to other companies and businesses. And who's to say that maybe this is your restaurant business that you started as cups, just like Bezos started with used books and turn it into Amazon, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate all your time, all the information. I mean, it's very helpful. I've got a, a lot of things that I can start working on right away to help do this and um, get the page up and running. And um, when I've got a little bit more content on there, I'll reach out and send it to you and maybe you can let me know what you think. Sure. Um, so part of this case study is in a week, I mean, yours is brand, brand new. So you can probably yeah. cover a lot of ground in a week, but there's a lot of things to do. So maybe two weeks we'll follow up and do another live video and okay. see how you've developed from that point. And uh, um, yes, and to it again and see what we can do to just keep building momentum. Because once you start the momentum, you don't want it to stop. You just want it to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate all your time. Absolutely. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Later.